It feels like lately life has been a series of unfortunate events. From recently losing my job, to having a hard drive completely fail and lose lots of video footage, technology, drone crashes, I'm feeling tired, burnt out and a little worn down. The other part of it is glamorizing homelessness and the gentrification of so many spots. Hi, my name's Flossie and I live in this Ford E350 step van. Her name is Siren, my little home on wheels. Amanda from Tideline to Alpine and I are not fans of city life. What we like nothing more is to take our vans down to the river, have a campfire and be alone in the wilderness. How delightful is the access that we have here to remote campsites like this. Today has definitely not gone to plan at all. It is still pissing with rain. I hinted at an exciting upcoming adventure, but it doesn't always work out. And my hard drive won't register. And I've lost three unposted videos and a whole year's worth of footage. Not every day is glamorous. anywhere. I have to scrape all the ice off the windshield. I've been doing this for about 20 minutes now. As you may have guessed, realized, noticed, I didn't grow up in Canada. I'm from the southern hemisphere, so driving on these snowy, icy, windy, curvy back roads is new to me. Siren is 22 feet long and a little daunting to drive one's entire house and livelihood on snowy back roads like this. Hooray for high clearance. really good. How about I just stay here? Does that feel good in all directions? Yeah. You're good. River. Van. Me. Parked. It's all dark in there because I've been keeping it warm. Sweet. That's good. Building us a privacy don't come in here wall. <laughs> yeah. When I saw this spot, I was like, oh yeah, then nobody will. Nobody will come. Nobody will come here. Great. <laughs> oh, part of me wants to turn the van around, but I can always open the back doors if I need a view, but would you look at this? I love it. <laughs> There's the sun. Look at us. Are we cute? Beautiful river. And a freaky dog. Are you ready? 
Oh, yeah. This truly is living in a van, two vans, down by the river. I know it's cliche and a lot of people were like, living in the van down by the river is kind of non, not really possible, but sometimes it is. And the other part of it is glamorizing homelessness and the gentrification of so many spots, but I'm stoked that here a few spots remain that are still public access, that are not gated off, that are places that you don't have to pay for that you can still get into. I mean, this one here is a little hard to get into. Everything is hard, frozen, and delightful. Hard, frozen, and delightful. Yay! Woohoo! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Despite the state of the world around us, and how destabilizing things that may happen in day-to-day -day life are. I think you might be able to tell that we very much love the vehicles that we live in. What a view. Snowy, river, beautiful, there's sunshine out there. It's gorgeous! These are our houses, our homes, our safe places. We belong here and belonging truly is a very, very precious sentiment. <laughs> Me and my gammy knees. Don't need no stinking van ladder. <laughs> yeah, you're there. A little in towards the van. Higher. Higher. I'm stuck. Higher. I'm Left foot higher. <laughs> There you go, there you go. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Cold but warm frozen? Is that a thing? Is, is warm frozen a thing? I think it's just cold, cold. Oh dear. firewood hauling it they say wood warms you three times once when you cut it once when you or chop it stack it and burn it today we collected and hauled it for our fire this evening because it's gonna get real cold time for some soup i think sometimes the world underestimates the emotional effort it takes to handle stress we chastise ourselves. Why are we tired? Well, we've been dealing with a lot of things, holding space for both ourselves, our emotions, and all the things going on around us. Find space to heal and recharge so that you can indeed survive. After a long day traveling, we were both knackered. Time for a nap, waiting for the sun to go down so we can make dinner and share lots of laughs around our evening campfire. We are gonna have a cozy dinner tonight before we have a fire. And so I am making uh, potatoes. These hash brown potatoes that are rehydrated, dehydrated, rehydrated. Um, and then some crispy tofu. And then Amanda is gonna be making a delicious salad and I'm really excited to have some warming potatoes and nutritious food in me and then hang out around the fire. I love campfires so much. Sometimes I find it a bit challenging when it is this cold outside, but I am wearing lots of layers and looking after my body, keeping it nice and warm. And yeah, it's gonna be really nice to be outside and listen to the sound of the river. I had a nap earlier and I think the excitement and the adrenaline of driving in snowy roads really kind of built up for me and I was really tired and it's taking me quite a bit of time to like relax, wake up from my nap and be like, okay, I'm ready to spend more time outside. I love being outside, but sometimes the transition between being inside and outside, when my space is this cozy, um, but 
how often do you get beautiful snowy crisp fresh starry nights like the stars are out it is beautiful out there so we're gonna do it we're gonna have a beautiful fire and i'm really excited about it <sighs> i think it's important to be gentle with oneself and when trying new things acknowledge that some of those new things take a lot of effort and energy and to try and slow down i'm a person who doesn't slow down and rest very easily so sometimes coming away where there's no self-service our off-grid out of the way down by the river it's really needed so it's been beautiful to come down here and i'm really excited to go and have a fire and then come back later on this evening and climb into my cozy bed but first dinner right i think those are crispy enough time to cook up the potatoes So it begins. <laughs> Hopefully. From carefully organized, sized, stacked materials, a carefully laid <laughs> base, <laughs> attention to detail at all corners. <laughs> it's like just a pile of. <laughs> there is intention behind it. Yes. Just don't know if I have enough tiny stuff, but we'll see. It's an art and a science. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't just like follow one set pattern every time. You have to know how to best work with it as it evolves. Yeah, because you don't know like each time your wood is differently dry, your, your setup yeah. is differently set up and spaced out. Some stuff is dry, some stuff is wet. It's a different temperature outside. Some mm. wood burns mm. faster. <laughs> Campfires are this beautiful test of one's resilience. The patience to get it started, the strategy of making it together, and the sitting still outside in the freezing cold until you get rewarded with heat. And then just watching it slowly grow and your hard work pay off of you know how wood warms you three times, once when you chop it, once when you stack it, and then third time when you burn it and we're doing that it looks beautiful oh it smells really good hi bud Good morning. I just woke up and it is beautiful out there. The fireplace is going, the diesel heater is going. It is toasty and warm in here. It's nice to be able to run my fireplace without having to really crank it up. 20 degrees. Yeah, it's lovely. Obviously, because I'm in a little simlet. Time to put some clothes on. I want to take some drone shots because this place is gorgeous and I want to show you. And it's time for breakfast. So, breakfast first.
It may not be a measure of physical strength or size. Instead, it is an inner strength that shows within your eyes so much determination, so much want and drive, a spirit of enjoyment that shows we are alive. You may not always see it, but it's there deep down inside. It might just take some coaching to bring forth that strength and pride. Each of us can be powerful. We have to know it is true, to let free our power, to do what we must do. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, and the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when funds are low and the debts are high, and you want to smile but have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Life is queer with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns, and many a failure turns about when you might have won had you stuck it out don't give up through the pace might seem slow you may succeed with another blow success is failure turned inside out the silver tint of clouds of doubt and you never can tell how close you are and may be near when it seems so far so stick with the fight when you're hardest hit. It's when things seem worst that you must not quit. What I'm feeling now as I face the future. My house siren. An unknown. Lying out beyond in front of me, unsure whether I'll be able to keep and make my plans. My hopes and dreams standing in a place of question. Fear of the unknown, it can really get you down. How do you deal with what you cannot see? How do you react and how must you be? Carry on regardless. Or stop and hide away. Stay out of the outdoors or carry on and play. Be safe and keep inside. Run away and simply hide. The job I knew was in so much danger. The life I now know is so much stranger. Fear of the unknown, never seen while I have grown. Fear of the unknown, it can really get me down. Stay strong and keep on fighting. Ignore what the media is writing. Cling to your loved ones dearly. This is just a blip, surely, clearly. Fear of the unknown, it will end in time, subside, until then keep going with pride. Or in my case trusting in the magic because that's all I feel I can do. Thank you so much for being here with me through this. Oh, we're about to leave right as the sun is coming over the side of the mountain. And this is not looking great. My poor drone injured finger is pissing blood. But Amanda's bringing me a finger condom.
Um, Amanda saw my finger, was like, okay, we got to redress that. So now I have a pretty finger condom. My, I think I have sliced up some of the nerves on the end of my finger. It really hurts. It feels like pings and needles on the tip of my finger, but I feel much better now that it's wrapped up. And hopefully now that I'm not climbing rocks and hiking through the forest, it'll actually stop getting bumped around. I'm just going to drive and everything will be fine. And the sun has come out. It looks so beautiful. While our camping trip had been absolutely idyllic, an amazing connection, time with friends, things did not stay so smooth. Campsites like this are not maintained. They get icy, muddy, full of potholes. I would really like to go out. Ooh, it's... <laughs> And I was quite quickly about to find out how trying to get a very long van out of a very tight campsite will not always go smoothly. Yikes. That was close. You ready to roll? Copy, right behind you. Okay, well, you can signal with that big call out right before the road. We can stop there. Okay, great. Oh my gosh! That was so scary! I had to drive through a big ice puddle. Oh, I'm shaking. Oh, I'm shaking. <laughs> oh, I was driving through a really big ice puddle because my van is too long and I didn't want to reverse and I didn't want to drive into rocks and fire pit mess. But I nearly got stuck in the ice puddle because the ice was giving me zero traction, but I managed to like go side to side and get some traction and be able to get out. Oh, and I've got dualies at the back and I'm heavy so that helps but also not a good sign sometimes oh that's stressful now I need to calm myself because this Iron Road still has icy patches and we have to get out again Hi, Franklin. Oh, you've got a tiny oh, little bit of snow on your end of... Oh, there we go. It's all gone. You had a snowy nose. You had a snowy nose. One last chilly evening walk with my bestie. Ah! We're gonna go have a look out over there. Cobbles. No. That's see all the cobbles. Cobble, 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 cobble,
super close down there. I know. Feels like it's so close you could just... There's definitely no road into there. No, boat access only. Yeah. Same with all of those places over there. Those are all boat access only. Yeah. On Mysterious daytime. But more than anything, I'm incredibly grateful that you all are here with me. The community, the support, my Patreons, your comments, your emails, all of the ways that you contribute and support and are along this journey with me. Thank you so, so much. And today I remember that spring is right around the corner. The days are getting longer. I have amazing friends and community in my life. This too shall pass. And one day we'll look back on these times, have tea and celebrate whatever adventure we're going through next. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That ensures that whatever my videos are doing, you will see them. Go to the subscriptions tab in your YouTube browser if you're on your laptop or on a mobile device and you're about to see my latest video every Saturday morning. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to all of your comments and I'll see you all next week. Bye!